Good morning everyone, it's Krebskohu here and I'm gonna be giving you guys or showing you guys a tutorial on how to set up a your own DayZ server on your computer, okay? So if you're all reluctant about having a dedicated server, then I'm gonna show you guys how to host it on your computer. And you already might be asking me, why would you want to host it on your own computer? Why would you make, be making a tutorial like this when it's probably so easy? Well, there's actually a bit of difficulties on actually setting up your own host on your own computer. And I'm going to be showing you guys why that's so and how you can remedy it, okay? So admittedly, this is going to be a little bit of an expensive method. There's two requirements. You're going to, one, need two copies of Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. I hear a few rumors where you can actually uh, just use the demo copies of Arma 2 and then the full retail copies of Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead in order to actually play DayZ. I don't know if it's true or not. You're going to have to find out by yourself. But in terms of what you actually need for this to work, you're going to need at least two copies of Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. One is going to be your account that you play the game on, the other is going to be the one that you host the server on, okay? So what I've got is uh, right here, the second requirement is a virtual machine. So we need those copies of Arma 2 and also a virtual machine. Uh, there are various programs that can actually do this. The one that I'm using is VMware, but I'm sure you can use uh, a variety of different ones, but I find this one is, works quite well because it's graphical, you can see everything in front of you, and it's just nice and simple. So what I've done is that it's basically an operating system, an operating system installed within your computer, this virtual machine. And on this uh, virtual machine, I have installed a copy of Arma 2 using different uh, CD key than my main one. And what I do with this one is that I set up a private server on it of DayZ. And so you can see here that this is my private server at the moment, all set up. And this is where the problem comes in. If you want to host a private server, oh god, I'm being killed at the moment by a zombie. Just finish him off quickly and hope nobody comes towards me. And uh, I know this is getting sort of out of the way, but this is what happens. So say if a zombie kills you on your own private server that's hosted on your computer, okay? What happens is that you want to respawn, but can you actually do that when you're the host? No, you can't, because normally in other circumstances, if you're just a player, you'll press respawn, abort back to the lobby, and then respawn again. If you're host of a server, what happens is that you need to respawn, suspend the entire server, then re-log in. Thing is though, when you suspend your entire server, everyone is disconnected and you have to restart everything. Everyone starts from square one. And so if you want a persistent uh, way of moving forward and playing your own server, then this is how you do it. So now that we have a private server set up on our virtual machine, now we just open up our game on our real machine, if that makes sense. And so now I've got myself loaded up here with the browser open and what I've done is I just filtered it down to my server, just to call the Krebs for example, just over my name. And you can see here that my server is already being hosted by that virtual machine. And so this is the account, my main account that I'm going to be playing the game on. And so I just go log in to my uh, private server over here and you can already tell that's me Krebs and that is the virtual machine Bernard right there okay so that's my two accounts now let's go okay and log in now while this is waiting i'll just describe a few more things now the whole reason we have this virtual machine is because simply put i tried uh, installing the game twice on my computer simply didn't work reason being because you'll get cd key in use whole point of having a virtual machine is that you can install the game on two different paths and you'll have two different registry key entries so you won't get the cd key in use business you'll be able to um join onto the same server without any sort of errors, okay? So now we're just going to be logging in here. And what you'll find is that I'll be uh, spawning quite shortly. There we go. So now I've actually logged on the server. So this is my main account that I would play it on with. Uh, my main my main computer operating system. And what you can see if I head over to players is there you go. That's me, my main account playing, and Bernard, my virtual machine, hosting it. And no errors whatsoever, we can play. Now, there's a few pros and cons about having a dedicated server. I just heard a gunshot, so there must be somebody around. But I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. Uh, the main pros and cons about having a dedicated server and a private server, well, there's a few. By having a private server, 
Um, the obvious, obvious benefits is that it's more free, okay? The thing with de the dedicated servers is that there's a lot of strict rules set down by Daisy mo uh, moderators, developers. Basically, you can't kick people when you want and stuff like that. But the nice thing about having a server hosted on your computer is that it's probably a lot harder to actually ban you. So it's there's a lot more freedom to kick people, to invite who you like, and just in sort of that sort of, uh, in that framework. However, there's uh, some cons such as the first thing is that it's hosted on your computer. With a dedicated server, it's global. No matter what server you log on, on, log on with, you'll have your character saved on the global server. If your uh, server is hosted on your own computer, it's only going to carry on to what is hosted on your computer. Also, another con is that if you restart your server, if you shut it down at all, then everything starts over from square one. So there are pros and cons. If you're looking forward to just testing the ser uh, your own server or, um, I don't know, just making videos or uh, just trying to save money from not having a dedicated server, you don't really mind about restarting and stuff like that, then there you go. There's, uh, there's, <laughs> there's uh, how to set up a private server on your computer. A little bit costly, it can be, but I'm sure you guys will find some ways around it to save a few dollars here and there. But, of course, guys, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, feel free to leave a question in the comment box below. Likewise, I'm going to be including a text tutorial in the description box. But, of course, until next time, see you all later. Bye-bye.